Hello everyone, I'm very happy to meet you all at Next Nation. Today I would like to talk about View Macros. It's a library for exploring and extending more macros and syntax sugar to view. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Kevin Dunn. I'm a View and View Use team member. You may also know me as the contributor of Element Plus. I'm also a college student for now and looking forward to being full time on open source. You can find me on GitHub and Twitter with the links below. Alright, so what is View Macros? View Macros will implement new ideas and proposals, which are usually proposed from the View community, as not being announced as official features. It makes us feel like a pioneer. First, View Macros provides more powerful and convenient macros and shortcuts. And it works on View 3 and View 2.7 out of the box. View Macros also provides a Vola plugin. That means there are very great development experience with it. It supports Vite's rollup. Webpack and so on, powered by M plugin. Okay, talk is cheap. I want to show you guys some real examples. Here is the first macro called Defined Options. After Vue 3.2, we have two script tags the normal one and script setup. If we want to define the name or inherit attributes of a component, then two script tags are necessary. We have to export options inside of the normal one. But if we have different options, it will be much easier. We don't need the normal one anymore. Define options is just an appetizer. The next macro is define model. If we want to define two-way bindings props, we have to define props define emits and call the ms function to change its value. It's obviously a tedious thing. So, if we change it to define model, it only takes six lines of code and also reduces duplicate code. For view 2, view macros has the unified mode. It will backport view 3 props and even names to view 2. For props, the model value will change to value. And for events, update module value will change it to input. Because they are the default names of V model on view 2. So it does write once and runs on both view 2 and view 3. As we know, Vue has the experimental reactivity transform now, and with it, the code can be even shorter. Then, the dot value is no longer necessary. Ok, the next feature is better defined. Vue doesn't support imported types for defining props and emits for now. With Vue macros, it will help you to resolve the imported types. And you can use intersection or extends or whatever you like, just like in TypeScript file. Of course, different image is also supported. Okay, let's try a real project using view macros. Okay, let's get started. I prepared a next project and installed the unplugging view macros. It's the plugin of your macros. And I installed ViewUse Core because different model requires it. And in Nux.config, I import Vite plugin and put it to Vite plugins. And I also create a DTS file to support micros TypeScript. Okay, I want to write a counter and use different model first. So I will new a file called counter.view and use the templates. 
define model and add and add the type primit is called count it's a number and count count okay we got the count is a ref okay i can display it and i can add a button to decrease it or add a button to increase it okay i will implement the decrease it's very simple i just need count of value minus minus and for increase plus plus okay that's it so i use counter view and i can declare a ref called count ref the value is zero and use v model count is count and also i can display it in app dot view and the next i can start a dev server to preview it okay i can increase it or decrease it and we can even use reactivity transform we can add some config to next.config experimental reactivity transform is true and we can use dollar define model and the can is just a number we use let's and remove the dot value it also works and we can try different options if we have a founder called counter and put it in counter founder and rename and rename it to index store view guess what happening the name of the components will be index so if we want to change it we can use define options and name is counter demo or whatever you like okay it's counter demo okay that's the examples of define model and define options there are many other features in view macros you can try it by yourself well back to slides thanks to all the contributors of view macros and feel free to create an issue if you have another ideas i'd like to thank all my sponsors who support my work and if you also enjoy my work like view macros you can consider to sponsor me at github to give me a boost thank you okay that's all for today i'm very glad to be here for this sharing you can follow me on twitter and get the latest news about view macros thank you hi thank you for joining us today hi. kevin i we do have a few questions for you today the first one being what is a good indicator that something should be made into a macro versus runtime code? Okay, actually, it depends on the complexity of the feature. I think if we can develop it by pure runtime code, then I'd rather use it. But if not, I have to make it into a micro macro. Uh, for example, it's impossible to check the type of props by TypeScript definitions because the type will be removed in the bundle files. So there are some TS type macros like uh, like define props or and define emits. Also, 
from the perspective of third party library, it also have no way to change the behavior of your core if using the runtime code. In contrast, macros require bundle plugins like Meet plugin or Webpack plugin, and it and it can do almost anything like mo modifying the source code, whether it's uh, on user land or it's view, view core. So micro uh, uh, allows more complicated features to be to be implemented. Yeah. Thank you. And okay, that's that. Fine. That goes to our next question of, are there any macros in the pipeline that have not been released yet that you're excited about? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'm working on the idea of define uh, macros. It can help the developers to make more powerful macros by themselves. Uh, it will uh, it will provide a API to mutate, prop, emits, or other options or other codes, uh, and greatly reduce the source load uh, of creating macros. And, and I think it will be expected to be released on, at the end of this year. Yeah. Okay. And last but not least, what are the drawbacks to using macros versus purely runtime code? Hmm, I think macro need more configuration uh, than pure runtime code. So for, for, for some beginning be, uh, for some beginners, they need to read more documentation to understand how to use it and how it works, but I think it's not a very hard thing to do. It's okay for me, I think. Well, great. Thank you, Kevin, for joining today. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you.